10 NFL future bets to consider placing for the upcoming NFL season. It is August 1st and the NFL season is right around the corner. The first preseason game, the Hall of Fame game, is in just a couple days and then the preseason, the madness, will have officially begun. In this video, I'm going to cover my 10 favorite future bets that I'll be placing today. We'll have a future video right before the regular season starts, but I'm going to cover five team-based bets, five player props, and then one plus 1,000 dart throw at the end of the video. Now, if you want to skip around, I have time stamped everything down below. You can see the player and the team that I am talking about, but subscribe to the channel if you are new. We appreciate everyone joining the channel. Our, our goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers before the beginning of the NFL season. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, so smash that subscribe button, click that like button. It helps us grow the channel each and every day. We got a lot of fun content coming your way, especially in August alone. We got the podcast starting back up. We got a lot. We got daily NFL videos. Yes, daily. Starting today, you're gonna see an NFL video every single day up until really the beginning of the NFL season, really for the next several, several months. So subscribe if you're new. We really appreciate it. But sit back, enjoy, and let's talk about the NFL. Now you can wait to place these bets. You don't have to place them today. As the preseason comes, the preseason goes, I'll post another future video, like I said, right before the regular season. Maybe I'll, I'll recap all 10 of these bets and I'll talk about a couple others that I liked as the preseason went on. Now, let me know your favorite bet down below in the description or in the comments below. And let's get into my first one. Taking the Tennessee Titans, taking over nine wins, minus 140 on MGM. And my hype beast, is this juiced? Yeah, probably. Probably I am to both of those questions, but this bet has not lost since 2015. So you're like, oh dang, I'm hammering it. Now, granted, it hasn't really won a lot since 2015 as from 2016 to 2019, the Titans had nine wins. They went nine and seven every single year. So you put your money in for the bet, you got it right back at the end of the season, but they finally broke through last year, 11 and five cash in this bet. And I'm back on this Tennessee Titans team and here's why. You got four free wins against the Jaguars and the Texans. Sorry to the respective fan bases if you're watching it. And it remains to be seen how good the Colts will be. Actually today, or earlier this week, Carson Wentz went down with an injury. And so who it remains to be seen how long he will be out. Will he miss some preseason? Will he miss some regular season games? You never know. So I think they're the real competition in this AFC South division. But the Titans, they do have the 13th hardest schedule. And in terms of opposing strength, of, in terms of opposing win percentage from last year, and that doesn't really take into account the Patriots and the 49 Niners, who are both Tennessee Titans opponents this year, who both didn't really play last good last year, but they will be better this year. But that will probably contribute to this low over under sitting at nine. Now, we haven't even talked about Julio Jones, the newest Tennessee Titan, newest acquisition, and love him or hate him, Julio Jones will go down as one of the best NFL receivers to ever play the game. And now he gets to team up with the guy that idolized him as a young man, AJ Brown. So now you got Julio Jones, you got AJ Brown, and then you got the king, King Henry. I mean, am I a Titans hype beast? You can see why I like this, but I think they got a good chance of getting this over nine wins. Now, you do know there's an extra game in the NFL this year. Not only do we have 16 games, we have 17 games. So getting them to push was nine and eight. I think they're much better than a nine and eight, barely above average five, barely above 500 team. I think they can easily get to 10 and seven. That seems at least a comfortable spot, maybe 11 and six. Who knows? I think the Tennessee Titans can cash this minus 140, locking it in. And the cat clinched their first back-to-back -back double digit win season since 2008. Moving on to my first player prop of the year, Alvin Kamara, over 70 and a half receptions, minus 125 on DraftKings. Kamara, he's been very consistent since entering the league. In his four career seasons, he's at 81, 81, 81. I sound like a broken record, and 83 receptions. Yes, he had 81 in each of his first three seasons. Then he said, I'll up it, and went to 83 last season. So why is the number so low? You're like, dude, he's cashed us easily by 10 plus receptions in four straight years. Why is it so low? Well, I'm sure as you guys know, Drew Brees, the future Hall of Famer, has retired. And so no longer the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints where Alvin Kamara plays. Now, who's gonna replace him? You either got Taysom Hill, who a lot of people come for your head if you're like Taysom Hill's a quarterback I'm whatever or Jameis Winston yeah yeah so you can see why this number is lowered but Drew Brees you saw him miss some time last year so we got a little bit of a sample sample size of what Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara could do and I won't lie to you if you had him in fantasy football you know the results not very good you'd think ah Kamara well Drew Brees is out let's give it to Kamara a lot no absolutely the, uh, kind of the opposite in those four games where Drew Brees was out Kamara had just 10 receptions over those four games and seven of them came in one game. So we had three receptions over a three game span. And if my calculations are right, if he's averaging one reception per game, he's gonna need a little bit more than 17 games to hit this over 70 and a half receptions. But either way, things will change this season. I think they'll get him the ball more and in space. He's arguably their best and only offensive weapon now that Michael Thomas decided, nah, surgery, you can keep that. Didn't wanna get surgery. And thus he will not be probably available for the beginning of the season. 
Remains to be seen exactly how many games he might miss or if he might not miss any time, but he didn't. He waited till June to get surgery when he could have had it in January. And so who knows, they will not rush him back because if you like Kamara, if you had Michael Thomas in fantasy football last year, you were definitely disappointed with the results. But either way, they'll be creative. I think the Saints know that Alvin Kamara needs the ball in space, dump it off to screen passes, dump offs, whatever you name it. Kamara is going to hit this over, locking it in. Moving on to another one, Chiefs and Bucks both to win their division, plus 105 on FanDuel. Now FanDuel, we're going to keep this one short and sweet. FanDuel is the only place that I, it allows you to parlay these. At least I checked uh, DraftKings and BetMGM did not let me parlay these, but I'm both picking them both to win their division and parlaying them. Chiefs, what do I have to say? I mean, they've got the Broncos, Raiders, and the Chargers in their division. Uh, I mean, do you think either, any of those teams are going to beat them? I would say no. They're minus 280 to win the division, and barring any injuries or anything like that, which we don't wish that upon anyone, I think they'll win that division. Now you look at this with the Bucks, who are about minus 190-ish to win their division as a solo bet. They're the reigning Super Bowl champions. They were not really great in the regular season. If you were a Bucks fan, you saw they really struggled out of the gates, but they eventually turned it on at the end of the season and were crowned Super Bowl champions. Now, they're returning every single starter, I believe, every single starter from that Super Bowl team. And the Saints, their main, the team that won the division last year, they lost to Breeze, as I already talked about earlier in the video. I like it. Both these two teams should win their divisions. I mean, you got the Panthers, you got the Saints, and you got the Falcons in the AFC or the NFC South competing against the, the Bucks whatever, I'll take it. The Bucks also have the fourth easiest strength of schedule in the league, sure. I'll take that even icing on top, locking that in, plus 105. It's a, it's a plus money play, no doubt about it. Now my fourth official play, Dak Prescott, comeback player of the year, plus 210 on DraftKings. Now this feels like Dak Prescott's award to lose. If you're looking at people behind him, and that's why he's the overall my favorite. He's about plus 210, plus 200 on a bunch of other books. The other players are like plus 700-ish. You got Joe Burrow, you got Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, Nick Bosa, all of those guys all sitting right behind behind Dak Prescott, but this feels like his award to lose. Like I said, in the four full games that Dak Prescott played in 2020 as he got injured in the fifth game around halftime, he threw for 422 yards per game and he had nine touchdowns and three interceptions. He was on a ridiculous pace. Then unfortunately he got injured. Now, obviously the Cowboys were in a ton of shootouts and that probably will continue this year as they did not really get a lot more defensive help, although they did draft some players in the draft. So we'll see how that works out for the play favors. But Dak, he's one of my favorite players in the NFL, mostly because of what he does off the off the field. Now he does a lot of cool things in his community and sometimes that goes a long way. And for this award, the comeback player of the year, and it's been won by a, by a QB for three straight years. And I think Dak Prescott makes it a fourth. I'm gonna keep this short. I think his stats are going to be ridiculous and I like him to win this comeback player of the year plus 210 odds I'm willing to throw that dart out there let's move on to team play Broncos Denver Broncos under eight and a half wins plus 115 on MGM now sure the Broncos have the 27th hardest schedule in the M in the in the in the NFL the sixth easiest I believe but if I look in the mirror and I say to myself are the Broncos an over 500 team my brain says no. Now that's what it would take because they have to go nine and eight. They got 17 games. Got to go nine and eight. And I don't think they are. Now I'm getting this at plus 115 value. Sign me up. The Broncos have not cashed this bet in four straight seasons. So if you want to go against the trend, bet the over. But you're still betting an over that is very juiced at like minus 145-ish. Now you're looking at it the past five win past four seasons. They ended with five wins in 2017, six in 2018, seven in 2019, and five last year in 2020. Now will they be better this year? Absolutely. I think they will, no doubt. I'd be fine if they were worse. That doesn't affect me at all. But they have, they have the return of Cortland Sutton. They made some moves in the NFL draft. They brought in Teddy Bridgewater. And like I said, they drafted Javante Williams. However, let's take a quick break. Let's take a quick break and do a thinking exercise. Close your eyes. Now pretend you're looking at a box score of a random NFL game. You're like, you're looking at the box score. It's late Sunday night. You're looking at, you see a player has 12 carries, 31 rushing yards, and maybe even a, a fumble. Now open your eyes. Who is it? Melvin Gordon. Yep, you are right. That is Melvin Gordon. And sadly, he is still a Bronco. You know, he was great with the Chargers, but he just did not look good last year, and I don't think he will look good this year. Relatively inefficient. Now, he did have some good games, but he's not the real reason I'm betting this under. It's because of the quarterback play. Now, you got Drew Locke, who's been up and down, up and down, up and down. If you're a Broncos fan, you know what I mean, and he's been injured. It's not necessarily all of his fault, but they brought in Teddy Bridgewater. So even if Drew Locke's out there, who's a roller coaster ride in itself, Teddy Bridgewater, he's one of the best quarterbacks at covering the spread, not at winning games. And that's not his fault. If you're a Panthers fan, like my calling our shot partner, Logan, you can, he knows from a, from a, from visual experience 
that Teddy Bridgewater can get really close, but never can pull through at the end. And whether it was his fault, whether it was the Panthers' fault, I don't know about that. They do have the sixth easiest schedule, like I talked about, but I'm willing to take this under, plus 115. I just don't think they're a nine and eight team. They already play against the Chiefs. The Chargers could be improved. People like the Raiders to look better this year. Who knows, that division could be maybe more competitive with the Chiefs pulling it out. Either way, I'm locking in this under. Now moving on to another under for a player. AJ Green, under 550 and a half receiving yards, minus 115 on MGM. Now, AJ Green, he just came off one of the worst efficient shooting, or worst efficient seasons ever in NFL season, maybe not ever, but he stayed healthy, surprisingly, for all 16 games after missing all of 2019, only playing nine games in 2018, but he reeled in 47 receptions on 104 targets for 523 yards, cashing this under. Now in Arizona, he has to compete for targets with Christian Kirk. You notice I didn't say he's competing with DeAndre Hopkins because there's that competition there. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is the number one guy and that will be shown throughout the whole entire season, every single game. Now last season, Christian Kirk played in 14 games. He put up 621 yards, so great job. He would've cashed this over if this was AJ Green. And, you know, I just don't think A.J. Green's going to be the number two guy. I think he will be the number three guy. And you saw Larry Fitzgerald struggle in that number three role. Not very good fantasy-wise or really statistically-wise. And you got to look at a lot of things. Now, A.J. Green, he struggled to get open last year. He struggled to beat man coverage. And whether or not maybe it's because he had the best corner on him, although I don't really know if that transcended throughout the rest of the year as T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd were very good. But Joe Burrow was force-feeding him the ball, and he still stunk. He had over 100 targets, which is a great target share in that Bengals offense. And whether it was Joe Burrow or whoever the Bengals had throwing him the ball, and he was clamped up. And that's why he didn't get a lot of receptions. And I think that could be the case. Now, I'll keep this one shorter. If he goes over, so be it. I really like AJ Green. Really liked him coming out of Georgia. I really like the player, and I think he has still has some juice maybe left in him, but to cash an under, you just need one thing to go wrong, and whether that is playing time, him not getting enough big enough target share, or even an injury, which you know he's very injury prone, which we will not wish an injury upon anyone, as that's, we just don't do that here. I'll take the under in this spot, and I'm moving on to a team that I'm kinda eh about, Seahawks. I'm taking their over 10 wins, plus 100 on MGM. So you look at it, Seahawks are one of the most frustrating teams to hate. And if you, I'm not saying I hate them, I, I'm kind of indifferent on them, but they're one of the most frustrating teams to hate. And why? Because they always pull out wins in cr crucial games and they're just frustrating. And that's large in part due to Russell Wilson. Now this, this team, they really didn't change much over the offseason. Still got Bobby Wagner, still got Jamal Adams on the defensive side. Obviously, still have Russell Wilson, still have DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson. I think Will Disley's returning as well. The defense still, it still might not be great, and that's okay. They have the 11th hardest schedule in the NFL. Now, I mean, I mean it's the Seahawks, though. You got to think about it. The Seahawks have won 10 or more games in eight of their last nine seasons. The one season they ended up with nine wins. They went 12 and four last year. They cashed this over five of their last nine seasons, pushing three times and only losing just once. And so you're looking at it, they won 12 and four games. So they won 12 games easily cashing this over. We're gonna have plus 100 value. We get another game and all I need is 11 wins. Let them to go 11 and six. The Seahawks pull out wins like that. That's just what they do. And I, I understand it might be frustrating if you're in that division. It's just what they do at the end of the game. It's Russell Wilson, he's clutch and he pulls out those W's. And that's I'm taking the over. Seahawks over 10 wins. I think they push at the worst. I'm locking that in. Moving on to arguably one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL right now, at least statistically speaking, Patrick Mahomes over a 5,000 and a half yards. So ask him to get 5,000 minus 112 on FanDuel. So eight quarterbacks have thrown for 5,000 yards before, although Drew Brees has done it five times the most easily, the most by anyone. And Patrick Mahomes is among that company as he did it back in 2018. Now, if you look at it, he failed to do it in 2019. And last year in 2020, he finished 260 yards short. Yes, just a measly 260 yards short. And he didn't play in the last game. Yes, he did not. He didn't play a full 16 games. Only played 15 games as he sat out the last one. Now, all he needs to do is average about 310 passing yards, which he does that on his career to hit this over. And I think Mahomes and company will be lighting up the scoreboards per usual. Still got Tyreek Hill, still got Travis Kelsey. Then Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be much better than he was last year. And maybe he's in that those fantasy football videos I'm talking about because I love CEH. Either way, I'll take this one in a heartbeat. I think he gets over 5,000 yards. If he plays all 17 games, this should be a no sweat bet. But either way, I think if he gets a full 16 and then rest the last game of the season, fine by me. I think he's got a good chance of cashing this over. Moving on to a team play. Lions, Detroit Lions, I'm taking the under five wins, minus 120 on FanDuel. Lions fans, close your ears, plug them. I'm taking the under. Sorry, Dan Campbell, please don't bite off my kneecap or whatever the heck you were saying. I'm just not a believer in the Lions this year. They just traded Matthew Stafford. They're 
franchise quarterback, and they got back Jared Goff, who, if I, even though I haven't made videos for a long while, I'm not a big fan of Jared Goff. Also, they have the sixth hardest schedule in the NFL. That's like kicking someone when they're already down. Now it's gonna be tough for them to win divisional games as they already have the Packers who now have Aaron Rodgers returning. They obviously have the Bears who just drafted Justin Fields. We'll see how they do. And the Vikings who I think will be better than they were last year. Now five wins doesn't offer a ton of wiggle room. Now gets, they could luck into five wins. That's They lucked into five wins last year, but they didn't give Jared Goff anything to work with. They got rid of Marvin Jones. They got rid of Kenny Galladay. Well, didn't get rid of him per se, but they let him walk. And yeah, basically they got Jared Goff and they're like, hey buddy, go out there and throw to Tyrell Williams and Brashad Perriman and have fun. TJ Hawkinson's there, but which I think he will have a good fantasy year because there's no one else to throw to. Now you obviously have DeAndre Swift, but they've been non-committal on basically the whole offseason on giving him the ball, giving him a full workload, bringing in players like Jamal Adams, Jamal, not Jamal Adams, Jamal Williams from the Green Bay Packers. Now, either way, what can you do about it? I'm taking the I'm taking the Lions, who could very well finish with the worst record in the NFL, and that would not surprise me one bit. Taking their under five wins, it could be four and thirteen. That would not not surprise me one bit, and I'm locking it in. Moving on to one of my favorite wide receivers in the NFL, player prop Robert Woods, over 995 and a half yards, minus 115 on FanDuel. Speaking of Matthew Stafford. Here is one of his newest weapons on the LA Rams. And I think he's one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. And you'll see him in my fantasy football videos time and time again, because he's a consistent producer. Always like a wide receiver 11 to 13. That's where he always finishes. And last year, he had a pretty decent year, but lower to his standards. Now, look at the last three seasons with the Rams. He had 12, 1,219 yards, 1,134 yards, and then only 936 yards last year. So his yards per catch dropped by nearly two. He still had a lot of receptions, like 90 receptions, but saw those go down to almost 10 yards per catch, which is not good. Now, obviously they traded for Stafford. I think their passing game will be better, but sadly, Cam Akers is down for an injury and he's probably out for the whole year. Now, could we see them bring in someone else? Yes. Could we see Daryl Henderson, who is a Memphis, court, Memphis running back from a couple years ago, do look pretty good? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think they'll be running the ball nearly as much. They're going to lean on Matthew Stafford, the newest acquisition, and I think he's going to have a big year. Now you look at Woods, he's seen 129 plus targets each of the last three years, and he's going to be Stafford's number one option. Now Jared Goff, great connection with Cooper Cup. Don't know if Matthew Stafford will have that, but regardless, they're going to be feeding Robert Woods with a lot of screen plays, a lot of other leather crossing routes, all of that jazz. And I think Robert Woods has a great year. Ask him to get a thousand yards, something he had done in two of the past three seasons. I think he gets there and I'm locking it in. He's gonna have nearly 90 to 100 receptions if he can stay healthy. And he's one of my favorite receivers for his, th so I'm locking it in for his third career, a thousand yard season. Moving on, my final dart throw for fun. This is for fun, this whole video is for fun. Najee Harris, the offensive rookie of the year, plus 1,000. Now before you're like, all right, put my next paycheck on it. Now let's hear me out, hear me out. So you're talking about Najee Harris. He's on the Steelers. If you did not know, he was running back out of Alabama. He is a rookie, obviously. If you look at the Steelers back when they were, not that they weren't good last year because they were undefeated for so long, but they've been really good championship level teams when they had great running backs. So that was like Le'Veon Bell, Jerome Bettis, Willie Parker. Sorry, I really just wanted to say Willie Parker. I won't lie to you since he was like my favorite running back since that's around the era when I started watching a lot of football and playing fantasy football. But back to the ground game. They need a good ground game. They do not want to sit back there and nor will they win games with Big Ben throwing 50 plus times per game, which happened very many times last season. That's just not how they're going to win the game. Now they will feed Najee Harris and you can count on that. They didn't draft, spend a first round pick on the man to not give him the ball. Over the last six seasons, three quarterbacks have won the, this award and three running backs have run this award. Now the three running backs you might ask, I think you might know them, Saquon Barkley, Todd Gurley, and Alvin Kamara, all of which had great seasons. Uh, Saquon Barkley, the most recent one, had 2,000 rushing yards and receiving yards combined. Kamara before that had 1,500 rushing and receiving yards combined. And in the game, the Todd Gurley before that, which I believe five or six years ago, he had over 1,300 combined yards and 10 touchdowns. Now, with Najee, you have a guy that's been absolutely insane at Alabama. In just 13 games, he had 1,500 rushing yards, 26 touchdowns, 43 catches for 400 plus yards, another four touchdowns. Year before that, he had nearly 1,500 combined yards, 20 touchdowns. He's a tank. If you want to watch his highlights for Alabama, go watch them. You'll be treated to an absolute superstar. And I think that's what they're going to get. Now, if you look at the players above him in terms of odds, because obviously he's not the favorite to win this award at plus 1,000, plus 800 on other books. You got players like Trevor Lawrence, who's going to be on a bad team, still could put up good stats, be on a bad team. Now you got someone like Justin Fields. Don't even know if he'll be starting this season. Someone like Zach Wilson is, as a Jets fan, Perfectly. I'm perfectly fine with losing this bet due to Zach Wilson having a great year. I'm okay with it. Trey Lance and Mac Jones, the other two guys, all quarterbacks, you can see above him, 
I don't know. No one knows if they're going to start again on their teams, and no one knows the stats that they're going to put up. So now you get a guy like Najee Harris, who I think the Steelers will be better than advertised, better than their props are giving them credit. I think they'll be a better team. They still got a dominant defense, and you got finally a running game that they've they've really lacked, and it was due to injuries mostly on the last season. James Conner was banged up really much the last the one to two years. And so I think Najee Harris has a chance. Now I'm not saying he's gonna win this award, but I think he has a really good chance. And that's why I'm gonna lock this one in. So I think he's got a good chance, plus 1000 odds. I'm in 10 to one, count me in. Now that will conclude my 10 favorite future bets for right now. This has been a fun video to create. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Let me know your favorite player down below, whether it's one of my plays, whether it's one of your plays. There's a lot of bets out there. It's just fun looking through all the over-unders and just scrolling up and down, up and down. It's a lot of fun. I'll see you guys tomorrow in what will be the top 10 breakout stars in my mind for the fantasy football season and just for the NFL season in general. See that video come out tomorrow. I appreciate you guys. We've got a lot of content coming your way. So get amped, hype up. It's going to be a lot of fun. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace.